Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, thank you, Tesco Wine by the Case, for sending me this case, uh, this mix case, which is called uh, Spring into Summer. Um, I think it's, it's six reds, which um, uh, I look at these and I, 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 there's, there's a bit of me that thinks it could be autumn into winter. There are some, uh, what I anticipate, are going to be quite uh, uh, robust flavours here, but um, that's what they call it, Spring into Summer. Uh, and um, six different reds. Are they all different countries? Uh, yeah, I think they are. So um, I'm going to dig in. I've arranged them um, in order of uh, ascending alcohol. Um, there's a red Bordeaux in there, and I was thought, oh, that's going to be the first wine. But no, it's one of the highest alcohol. In, 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 they, they range from 13 at this end to 14 at that end. So it's not a, a huge spread. But I'm just going to dive in and see where I get to. So the first one, Valtier uh, for a 2009 Reserva from Otiel Requena, uh, made from Tempranillo and Bobal. Not very deep in colour. It's got um, a, a very interesting aroma. Um, there, there's a bit of it that's due to age. Uh, sometimes I'm, I'm slightly concerned when I see 2009 reservas um, in uh, in some supermarkets because you, you get the feeling that the wine has been uh, oaked subsequently, uh, as in they've made a, a young wine, shoved it in a tank, and uh, when someone's ready to buy a wine, they'll then shove it in a barrel for the requisite amount of age. Here it feels like uh, everything's been done authentically. So you're getting a slightly mature edge, but there's um, almost a, a toffee edge to this uh, Slightly jammy, slightly cooked red berry and plum flavour. Let's taste it. Soft, gently spicy. I'd prefer it a little bit with a little bit more fruit. Um, sort of one I would love to. It's 2009 here. I'd like to have been uh, drinking this about three years ago. Um, it feels like the, the fruit was, was, was um, had a little bit of freshness and bounce to it. Uh, it's slowly fading now. Some people will love that style of uh, uh, more mature wine. But um, for me, I like something with a little bit more oomph, a little bit more bounce, and a little bit more vivacity. So, okay, next one. Uh, Most Wanted. It's a label you might have seen starting appearing in uh, supermarkets probably about, mm, I don't know, three or four years ago. Um, so they, 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 it's a label that they, uh, it's not confined to one country. So I think one of the first ones to appear from, from New Zealand. I think they've got a... Uh, New Zealand Pinot and I think they've got a Sauvignon as well but uh, uh, this is the most wanted uh, San Juan uh, Malbec um, from Argentina 2015 uh, weighing in as are these first three reds all at 13% alcohol let's give it a whirl now it's interesting this this has uh, got almost a similar um, type of fruit character to the first one uh, as in that soft ever so slightly jammy ever so slightly baked berry uh, but it's um, five and a half years younger, so it's got more, it feels like it's got a little bit more vitality. Um, I look at the colour and uh, some Malbecs are almost like black. This one is uh, quite pale, and uh, let's see if it's pale and interesting. So that baked berry flavour continues, and um, I'll, it, it's some ones, um, the, the province, is, no, is it one or two provinces? For, no, it's the one just to the north of, uh, of Mendoza, so it's a bit warmer. Uh, the vineyards tend to be a little bit higher, so that's, uh, that uh, has a, a tempering effect on the climate. Uh, but in general, you get fuller, riper, um, uh, yes, deeper, deeper coloured and more tannic wines than uh, you do in, uh, in, in most parts of Mendoza. Here, it feels like they've got that, and it feels like the grapes have started to shrivel a little bit on the vine, but they've been quite careful in the way that they've made the wine, not extracting too much of that slightly dry tannic edge. So by itself, uh, I'm thinking mm, maybe I'd like a little bit more freshness of fruit, but uh, I imagine with a large hunk of protein, um, that would go rather well. Wine number three. Uh, we are in Chile for uh, Las Cometas Carmen Air Reserva uh, from the Val Central. We have to call it Val Central rather than Central Valley. Uh, it's a bit of that Judean people's front versus people's front of Judea to me, but uh, hey, uh, keep someone happy. Let's give this one a whirl. Taking a little while to come out of its shell, um, uh, but eventually it start, the, the, the Carmen Air character, that slightly uh, dark red and uh, black berry uh, mixed with this herbal character starts to emerge. Uh, it feels like a wine, as with the previous one, where there are some Carmen Airs that are deep, deep, inky black in colour. Here they've made a genuine red wine. And uh, the more I sniff it, the more of this slightly aromatic fruit character is coming out. And it's improving with each swirl. Give it more swirls and then I'll have a sip. 
well as Carmen airs go, that's um, on the really friendly side. Sometimes that uh, herbal edge can almost be a little bit too much, especially if they pick the grapes a little bit too early. But here, feels like everything's ripe. It's not uh, amazingly concentrated, but um, it makes it, it makes for, a, uh, sometimes I, I have a problem with the uh, um, middle ambition Chilean wines. They almost seem to be trying too hard. They make something that's um, more concentrated, but not necessarily more drinkable. Here, uh, it is that genuine lightness of body for Carmen Air um, that, um, that I find attractive. It's got the it's got the, the flavours and it's got the it's got the classic Carmen Air character, but it's not ratcheted up uh, to too high a volume and uh, makes for a wine that would be pretty yeah pretty gluggable and swiggable. Uh, that's 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 nice. Let's try wine number four. Uh, so going up a massive half a percent alcohol for the regions. And uh, which is a range that um, is exclusive to Tesco, I think. Uh, uh, this one is the 2013 Kunawara Cabernet. Let's give it a whirl. Well, it's just been released from its screw cap, and uh, as with the um, with the Carmen Air, it seems to be growing and growing and growing with each swirl. Uh, the first things I noticed were the uh, little bit of mint. Often I find in uh, Kunawara Cabernets that there is that edge of mint. Uh, there was also licorice. Licorice for me is a sign of, um, quite, of quite high ripeness uh, and alcohol, but not so much that uh, it's dominating the wine here. Then, uh, subsequently, the fruit started coming up, so you're getting more of those uh, classic black currant flavours. And it feels like the more swirling I'm doing, yeah, there's, there's, there's more edges coming out. Uh, there's the black currant, but it's also blackberry and plum. Uh, it feel there are some some Kunawaras are really precise and very cassis driven. Here it's got a little bit more, um, yeah, a little bit more characters from the fruit basket, for want of a better term. And when I taste it, there's something uh, I'm not so sure about. Almost it rem reminds me of aspirin, and uh, I used to love chewing soluble aspirins when I was uh, when I was young. It's uh, my mum used to think I was a bit mad, um, but it's got something of that slightly. Uh, aspirin-like flavour, and to some, you get a little bit of that character in, in, in Alka-Seltzer. Uh, the fruit flavours are still there, those edges of mint and licorice, but that, um, that aspirin character uh, has me sort of going, mm, not so sure about that one. It's okay, and uh, I'll keep an eye on it. Um, it. As I said, it was evolving in the glass in front of me, so it may just, be need, it may just need a little bit of time to, to calm down. But uh, at the moment, looking a bit... Uh, a bit elbows, a bit disjointed. Let's see whether wine number five uh, looks disjointed. So this is uh, Chateau Desclos, Desclos, sometimes they pronounce the S, sometimes they don't. 2010, Bordeaux Superior, Elevé en Fou de Chêne, so aged in oak barrel. Um, I ought to hold it up to uh, the light and see whether it's shed a, a sediment, because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's past its sixth birthday and it may have, have thrown a little bit, but I uh, can't see anything in there. But yes, weighing in at 14% alcohol, uh, 2010 was a warm year, which um, may be too warm for some of the classic appellations, but imagine if you're uh, making uh, basic Bordeaux, you're going, ah, oh, can we be like this every year? Anyway, let's give it a whirl. It's got this nice cedary restraint to it. Cedary restraint, what on earth does that mean? Uh, what I mean by that is um, that um, it's been aged in oak and I imagine if I'd come across it when it had been just bottled, uh, that oak would have been a bit too loud and a bit too forceful, but uh, over subsequent years it's mellowed and uh, so its impact is there. There's a little bit of this um, cedar character. They don't age it, age it in cedar. It's just that for some reason cedar is the character that uh, uh, oak aged Bordeaux seems, seems to take on. Uh, and um, so whereas it would have been louder, now today it's a little bit more restrained, um, and, which allows some of this fruit to come through. And it's this gentle, um, yeah, ever so slightly cooked black currants and, uh, uh, and ripe plums. It smells, it smells pretty classic Bordeaux, really. It's got nice maturity there. It's, um, everything feels in balance now. It doesn't feel like there's any tannin that needs to um, calm down, doesn't feel like there's any oak uh, front and centre. It's just a gentle, relaxed, steak-friendly bottle of wine. I wouldn't want to keep it for too much longer. Um, it feels like it's, yeah, at its peak now. And um, 
Uh, I, I, it's one of my favourite, well, I think probably my favourite so far. And it's got that mellow edge. Uh, it's got a little bit of um, uh, Bordeaux, a lot of red Bordeaux has this character of uh, a slightly rogue yeast called Britannomyces. In small amounts it adds character, in large amounts it takes over your wine and has it smelling a bit like a, um, a, a fusty horse barn. But here it's just there and adding a little bit of character uh, rather than uh, making it taste of uh, um, a sweaty horse. Uh, let's try wine number six, and hopefully no sweaty horse here. Uh, so the final wine is Higavale Heights, Shiraz from the Western Cape in South Africa, 2013, and as with the one before, weighing in at 14% alcohol. Well, that's um, gushing out of its screw cap. Uh, sometimes, um, well, there were a couple of the wines earlier that uh, felt like they needed to come out of their shell. Here, it's, um, yeah, it's jumping out and going, yeah, here I am. Uh, juicy, berry, spice... Uh, not, uh, ripe but never overripe and um, maybe it's got a little bit of an imprint of oak but it's never too loud. Um, it smells pretty classic Shiraz and rich rounded very juicy spicy flavours and um, it, it's a strange one because um, from, from the smell I, I thought it was going to be a little bit beefier and uh, I, 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 I don't go out looking for, for beefy Shirazes but uh, when I taste it it's not quite as full body as I expected. Um, I would prefer it either with a little bit more grip and grunt or with a little bit more perfume. It's good, but um, it's not great. It's good, honest, uh, juicy, yeah, grill me some ribs and or broil me. Broil? Who says broil? Uh, that's a very American thing. Apologies for that. Uh, yeah, get, give me a, a, a big stack of ribs and I'd really enjoy it. But um, yes, one of those wines where... I sort of go, oh, nearly there, nearly there, but not quite. Um, so, um, favourites of this sextet. Well, I like the Bordeaux and the uh, and the Carmen Air, um, followed then by the, the Shiraz and the Malbec. The region's Cunoir and Cabernet, I'll come back and have a look at that. Uh, no, I wasn't so keen on the Otil Requena Reserva, but... Um, um, and um, but um, maybe I should uh, go out and uh, drink a little bit more of them and see if I can really spring into summer. <laughs> see you soon. Apologies for such a cheesy finish.